Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Matt and today we are brewing a Belgian Trappist Single Ale. I do enjoy Belgian beers, but I have not brewed one in a very long time. So I'm very excited to give this one a go. Uh, also, we are having a bunch of family and friends over for this brew day. So that should be a lot of fun as well. I got the strike water heating up right now. So first we are going to jump into Beer Smith 3 to go over the recipe. And then we will jump right into the brew. first design this recipe is a five and a half gallon batch and we use the scale recipe function in Beersmith 3 to reduce the size to three and a half gallons. Uh, first we're going to go over the malt. This is a very simple malt fill as we are just using Pilsner malt. We are also using clear Belgian candy sugar as this is important for the style. We want the hops and the yeast to bring most of the character here so we plan on keeping the fill very simple. For hops we are using Saz and Hollatower both for bittering and aroma. The Saz hops will provide earthy, herbal, and spicy flavors, and the Hollow Tower will provide earthy, grassy, and nectar notes. For the yeast, we are using Belgian Strong Ale from Y Yeast. For the uh, starter information, uh, the pack of Belgian Strong will provide 96 billion yeast cells and 135 billion is required for this batch. So ideally you'd want to use a yeast starter if using only one pack. I did not, since it is the Belgian Strong Ale variety, I figured one pack would probably be fine. For the water tab, we are using around a two for one ratio for sulfate to chloride, so this will help accentuate the bitterness. And we are also using high bicarbonate. Now we're gonna jump right into the brew day. We first collect around 5.6 gallons of distilled water and we get ready to add brewing salts. We measure out 6.8 grams of calcium carbonate, 5.2 grams of magnesium sulfate, 1.3 grams of calcium chloride, and 3.6 grams of baking soda. We add the brewing salts into the water and then we mill our grains to a fine crush. Next we mash in. We stir up the mash to break up any dough balls. After 15 minutes, we take a pH reading and it looks close enough to target. After our 45 minute mash, we start ramping up the temperature to mash out at 169. After we have completed the mash, we lift the grain basket up and start pressing the grains to extract as much wort as possible. We take a pre-boil gravity reading and it comes out to around 1032, which would seem low, but we are adding almost a pound of candy sugar late in the boil, so this is pretty close to target. When the boil has been reached, we add 0.8 ounces of Saz and Holler Tower for 60 minutes and 0.2 ounces of Saz and Holler Tower for the last 15 minutes. We also measure out 12 ounces of clear candy sugar that we will add in there as well. We then send boiling wort to the pumps, line, and chiller to sanitize the equipment. And then once the boil has been completed, we turn on the cold water to the plate chiller to start chilling the wort. After the wort has been chilled to pitching temperature, we add our Belgian strong ale yeast and add oxygen to the fermenter using a stir stick. After two weeks have passed, we start racking the beer over to the keg. We first fill up the keg with star sand and push the sanitizer out with CO2 to fully purge the keg of oxygen. Lastly, we move the beer over from the fermenter into the purged keg using a low oxygen transfer method. So 
So here we are at the end of the video where I talk about the brew day and then also talk about my tasting notes for the Trappist single. Um, I had a really great brew day and I had a bunch of people over which was a lot of fun though I, I found it difficult to keep track of my, uh, my brewing so I did make a few mistakes along the way. I did forget to set my mash timer um, so I kind of just gave it an hour what I thought was an hour um, before I started my mash out. The, uh, the other mistake I made was when I was taking my pre-boil gravity, it seemed lower than I expected because I wasn't considering that I needed to put clear Belgian candy sugar in to the boil. So I actually corrected that gravity with DME and then when I had to add the Belgian candy sugar, I, I totally forgot about that. And so this is actually a little bit stronger um, than anticipated, but that's okay. It does throw it out of spec. Uh, but if you follow in the beginning of the video, if you are making this beer, um, that that those um, ingredients would, should still keep you in spec. Um, regarding the beer, the only thing I noticed uh, right away was how cloudy this beer is. I'm not entirely sure why it's so cloudy, and uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is pretty cloudy. But I gotta say, <clears throat> this is actually a lot more clear than what it was. I had my uh, my citrus wheat on tap right next to this, and the citrus wheat was actually clearer than this uh, this Belgian beer. I'm not sure why it was so cloudy. We did use fining. Uh, we did use the Irish moss at the end of the boil. Um, the only thing I can think about is maybe it was the yeast strain that we're using, the Belgian strong ale yeast, but I'm not entirely sure. It is still cloudy, but it is clear now. But I did want to mention that uh, I, it was a little bit unexpected for how cloudy this was for a while. Um, and the last thing I want to mention before we get into tasting notes was that um, I did also make another mistake and I forgot to take my final gravity on this beer. So I don't know exactly where this is sitting at as far as ABV. Though with uh, the DME that I added into the boil and my target was around 10.07, um, so it's pretty dry. It's around, it should be setting at around six and a half percent. And mind you, again, this is with the pound of DME I added that it wasn't supposed to add during the boil. So it's around six and a half percent for this, this beer I'm holding in my hand. But yeah, so now we can talk about appearance, aroma, mouthfeel, and flavor. Uh, the first thing we can do is talk about appearance. And right now it's a, uh, it's a pale yellow to medium gold color. Um, I would say it is still pretty cloudy. I don't know if you can tell that, but it is still cloudy. And it does have a white head um, for aroma. So it has that traditional Belgian yeast uh, character. And it has a lot of uh, spicy and floral notes. And it has a uh, low multi sweetness. Uh, next we can go to mouthfeel. Yeah, I would say it has a medium body and uh, it's, it's quite smooth actually too so lastly is the flavor so it has a, a fruity hoppy flavor and it certainly finishes dry which it's supposed to like i said i didn't take a final gravity reading and it would be good for this part of the video but uh, it should have finished at around 10.07 uh, so it should be pretty dry um it definitely uh the bitterness is uh is very very low on this you do get a lot of hot flavor uh but you don't really uh, taste a lot of the bitterness i would say uh it, it definitely has more of a malty sweetness up front um and then like a grainy sweetness towards the finish as well i would say for hot flavors um it's definitely spicy and floral like the aroma um you can definitely kind of taste the spicy and floral notes as well but that about covers it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you uh, learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment down below if you have uh, any comments. I check the comments all the time. But anyway, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.